Hey, Goba here. If you maxed out your Rishu and Ruame and you're satisfied, well, sorry, because it's time to go back to the relic mines in Penaconi. Just kidding, but two new sets were revealed today and they look kind of spicy. If you don't want to refarm, you're all good in my opinion, but they are still quite nice and may very well be the best in slot relics for future units. So today I'll be reviewing the new sets, how they work, and who might be able to use them alongside some simulations to see their upgrade on certain units. So like and sub if this video helped, let me know below your thoughts on the new sets, and let's begin. Our first set is a debuff DPS oriented set, Pioneer Diver of Dead Waters. Debuff DPS are units like Welt and Dr. Ratio, but this set could even be used on units that have a singular debuff in a core part of their kit, like perhaps Hook who can apply burn every skill. So the two piece grants a 12% damage increase when you deal damage to enemies with a debuff. Now this is just an upgrade over every single element set two piece provided the enemy has a debuff applied. With the large variety of amazing debuffs we have and their easy application, I can see this being used as a universal and easily farmable two piece combo set. Why farm imaginary two piece when you can just farm this? It won't be a massive upgrade, only 2% damage, but it just means easier access to a stronger boost for many DPS. Characters that can enable this two-piece full DPS are damage amp debuffers like Pella, Silver Wolf, Welt, and Gwenifen. But again, debuffs are quite common, so even a break, a damage over time, or even an ultimate mark from Ruame can trigger this for you. You will want high debuff uptime to not be missing out though, because whilst 12% damage is really nice, a lack of it in a few turns will be a DPS loss over the two-piece elemental sets. The thing to note is this damage percent is universal too, it's not tied to an element. This means for weird cases on DPS that use Ting Yun, you get a tiny little extra power. Benediction procs use the buffed ally's stats including damage percent, but not their elemental damage percent unless it's for lightning. So converting 10% unusable imaginary damage percent for ratio plus Ting Yun onto 12% usable damage percent is a niche little bonus for benediction procs. 4-piece is like the imaginary set, but a bit different. First you get 4% crit rate, then if the enemy has at least 2 debuffs, the wearer's attacks will gain 8% crit damage. If the enemy has at least 3, this goes to 12%. So in total already, by hitting an enemy with 3 debuffs, you'll get 12% damage, 12% crit damage, and 4% crit rate, which is not bad. However, right now, this is competing with the imaginary set's 10% crit rate, which is equal to our current crit buffs. Again, this is much more accessible and not tied to imaginary DPS, but still. After the wearer inflicts a debuff, however, these two crit buffs will be doubled for one turn. You now will get 8% crit rate and 24% crit damage. This is also equal to the imaginary set's total power and crit value, but you get it significantly easier. There's no more hoping to break with an imaginary unit or relying on Welt, and any debuffer DPS can run this too. So if you apply a debuff every turn on the core part of your kit, you are now getting a permanent 12% damage, 8% crit rate, 24% crit damage very easily. It starts doubling after you apply a debuff, so even if your attack applies a debuff at the end of the attack rather than before the attack, it won't matter. That first attack may be a little weaker, but provided you keep debuffing, this 100% bonus will stay on your character. It can also apply from just applying debuffs, it doesn't state that you have to do it during an attack. So who can use this? Well, the 2-piece is usable on any DPS that doesn't traditionally use a 4-piece as their best in slot, or if they use a 4-piece but it's not that much stronger than a 2-piece mix. You can use this as a universal and easily farmable combo for them. Furthermore, you can now mix two damage percent sets with a two-piece element set and two-piece pioneer. Damage percent is very strong and on most characters and situations will be beating out a two-piece attack percent. The four-piece is a bit more niche. If you have tons of debuffs on enemies, well, then anyone can use it really, but the 4% crit rate and 8-12% crit damage isn't necessarily that OP. It's the double part that makes it stand out. Units that apply debuffs on core parts of their kit are the following. Dan Hung's slow on skill, but it's not guaranteed and you don't build effect hit rate on him. It could be nice though since his other options aren't amazing. Himiko can apply burns on each of her abilities, but at such a low base chance that it's not worth it. The 4th piece follow up set is just going to be easier to use and better. Hook can apply burns on her skill and on more enemies with her E4. It is the same chance as Dan Hung though, and we don't build 67% effect hit rate on her, but it can be fine to use. Pella applies plenty of debuffs on every turn with certain light cones, 
Pella doesn't traditionally build 4 DPS though, so a no for her unless you're a crit Pella enjoyer. Serval has many ways of applying her shock, but you have the same effect hit rate problem for consistency. Topaz technically has a free debuff with no effect hit rate needs if she uses her skill, which is proof of debt, though the follow-up sets 4 piece is still very strong. Maybe this even works when she randomly applies it upon enemy death. This could be a new secret best in slot for her if you're running an AoE debuffer alongside her or if you have her E1-S1, and we'll have to test on release. Welt will apply his slow very frequently, and he has access to many debuffs for maximum set power like his Imprison and Vulnerability. I found this set is a 4.8% DPS increase over the imaginary set for him, without including Imprisonment from Breaks, only his ultimate. Dr. Ratio will apply his effect resistance reduction on skill, and hitting it just once allows him to reapply it even easier. His technique can also apply slow to all enemies. His high toughness damage allows for imprisonment too, and overall this set is a 4.5% DPS increase over imaginary set and max potential, including imprison breaks. Silverwolf crit DPS, which you'd run at ideally E2 onwards, can run this set and it gives a ton of free crit, and this will be competitive with the quantum set. I won't be covering the dot units since they don't build crit, but Gwenaifen can help a unit with the conditions as well as making it easier to apply their own debuffs with her E1 bonus. If I missed anyone though, let me know below. The second set is the Watchmaker, Master of Dream Machination set, and it is a break effect oriented set, being a variant of the 4 piece Thief of Shooting Meteor Relics we all avoided farming. The 2 piece bonus is a very simple 16% break effect. This is good for Ruan Mei, and so far that's pretty much it. Break DPS can use this 2 piece in combo with the Thief set, but Shui Yu, for example, would much, much rather run 4 piece Quantum instead. Nonetheless, we can now stack 2 break effect 2 piece combos to avoid farming even more Thief, just you won't get the random 3 energy drops. The 4 piece grants all allies a 30% break effect buff for 2 turns when they use their ultimate on an ally. This is important to remember, it's on ultimates, on allies. Don't worry though, this works on Ruame's ultimate, just like Hackerspace. The normal way of telling if this can work on a unit is by seeing if their ultimate puts a reticle over an ally before casting. Royal Mate does indeed target allies when applying her buffing field. This means, for example, Pella, who targets enemies during her ult, can't use it, so no more 4 piece hackerspace Pella, please. Silverwolf can run a break effect build, but her ultimate targets enemies too, so don't run this on her. So, not only is this 14% more break effect total than the full shooting meteor set's power, it also grants bonuses to all allies. Although break DPS aren't common right now, even just having 30% break effect on a DPS that has none of it originally means a 1.3 times damage increase to any eventual breaks and break dots. This buff should work like Hackspace in that it gains a grace period and won't tick down on the acting ally when it's applied. For example, if I skill into ultimate with Ruan Mei, I'll gain the 2 turn buff but won't lose it on that first turn, allowing for more uptime on this buff. Either way, for Ruan Mei who can have a 3 turn ultimate, this can be a near permanent 30% break effect and in total you now get a 46% break effect buff from this relic set, reducing your build requirements by a ton. Including her traces and trace passive, you will only need 77% break effect in subsets, or 13 subs. When considering memories of the past, you drop to 3 to 4 substats. Do be warned though that she will have downtime on this buff in a longer fight, and using it to save stat requirements is only good if you time your turns of burst damage outside of this. If you drop to 150% break effect, you lose an 18% team-wide damage buff, and if you run a 4 turn rotation, you'll definitely want to be at 160% break effect before this 30% buff from the 4 piece, because there will be too much buff downtime. Other buffers can use a set as it's just a more offensive version of Hackerspace, a set that is annoying to pilot and can mess up rotations. And the speed buff isn't even that amazing in most situations. Running this on Bronya, for example, will bring some potential extra damage boosting power over the usual nothing, but you will lose out on the Hackerspace 2P speed, which is pretty big, so it's up to you. Also, refarming all those speed stats on a new set does not sound fun. For the future, though, I can definitely see buffers just running this set to let DPS's breaks pack more of a punch, or to increase delay on imaginary and quantum breakers. I know Shui Yu would love this on her team. So let me know below if I missed anything or if you're going to end up farming these sets and on who. Thank you to all my amazing YouTube members, thanks for watching and have a go of a day.